What's going on YouTube? Jake Verden Tech here back with another video and today we have another 3D printing related video and this one's a bit more specific. We are talking about the Creality Ender 3 which is arguably the most popular consumer grade 3D printer on the market and recently I had some issues with the SD card reader not reading my SD cards and the issue kind of went on to where I couldn't even use the printer. So today we're going to talk about a solution that I have for that issue or more or less a workaround. So for those of you out there that are perhaps scouring the internet looking for a solution to this problem as it is quite relevant when you do any sort of Google search in relation to your SD card reader not working on your Ender 3 or Ender 3 Pro. Now this does appear to be a pretty popular issue as whenever I did a search related to this issue the search results came up pretty quickly, but unfortunately for me, I wasn't able to find any solution until now. So the way the issue started happening on my Creality Ender 3 Pro is over time, whenever I would go insert a SD card with my G-code files on it, and I would select print from TF, or it might say print from SD on your device, but for mine it said TF. It would get really slow and laggy, and it just got worse and worse over time until now whenever I try to hit print from TF, it would just completely freeze and I would have to reboot the system. So I thought, no big deal, I'll just go grab another SD card as it's probably my micro SD that's just not working, as it is the one that came with the Ender 3, which probably isn't the best quality to start with. So I grabbed another micro SD card, loaded up some G-code files on it, and tried it and had the same issue. So then I knew immediately it was something internal on the machine, is probably the SD card reader has just gone bad on the actual Ender 3 itself. I tried other solutions too that some people had recommended in videos, such as using a different formatting tool when you go to format your micro SD card, aside from the default one on your operating system, which in my case was Windows. And I had the same issue, so that didn't resolve anything for me, but mileage may vary as that might fix the issue for you, but I highly doubt it as that formatting tool has never let me down before just on the standard Windows. Alrighty guys, so my solution to fixing this problem on the Creality Ender 3 involves something delicious you find at the grocery store in your local bakery and a pretty creepy deep sea creature. Well, you guys will understand what I'm going at with the images on the screen. But yeah, that's exactly what I did. I loaded up Octoprint on a Raspberry Pi, the 3B Plus model to be exact. And Octoprint as a 3D printing solution allowed me to bypass the actual SD card reader of my Ender 3. And instead of using an SD card to upload files to my printer, instead I just interact with the printer through the web interface of Octoprint and I can upload my G-code files that way. So like you may have heard me mention earlier, this isn't a direct fix for this issue on the Ender 3, but this is a really solid workaround and you get a ton of features added from using Octoprint for your 3D printing. So for those of you that don't know what Octoprint is, it is basically a 3D printer controller. Just like how you manage your 3D printer in its many settings on its actual built-in display. Octoprint does the same thing except you access it through a web interface on a device on your network. So that could be your desktop, laptops, maybe even a smartphone or tablet if you have it configured properly. And you can access and control the printer from any of those devices on your network. So Octoprint is most commonly used for remote management. So not even managing the printer while you're on your network but you can also set it up to where you could manage your printer from off the network and also set up things like webcams so you can actually watch your printer while you're away from wherever your printer is located. So the way Octoprint works and the way you set it up is you can install it on a single board computer most commonly used is a Raspberry Pi of some sort. I happen to be using the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus and you basically just download the Octoprint ISO file, flash it onto a micro SD, plug that into your Raspberry Pi, and from there you hook the Pi up to power, run a USB cable from the printer to the Raspberry Pi, and then connect the Pi to your network via a Ethernet patch cable. 
And that's all there is to it. There is a little bit more setup and configuration once you access the actual web interface, like setting up your account and device. And there's a lot of good, really good tutorials out there that I might try and link below in the description for you guys to check out. But for now, in this video, this is just the workaround for the SD card reader not working on my Ender 3 and kind of a little bit of a review of Octoprint. Alrighty guys, we're going to hop onto the desktop so I can give you a quick tour on what Octoprint is like. Alrighty guys, so here we are on the desktop and the way you access Octoprint is actually pretty simple. You don't need to have an IP address from your device. Basically, you just type in octoprint.local in your web browser and it'll scan for any devices that have Octoprint loaded up on it and it'll pull up this login screen. And right now it's in touch with the printer. Right now the printer isn't actually on, but the Raspberry Pi that is connected to it is on. So that's how we are able to access this web interface. So this is the dashboard that you'll see when you log in. And it looks a little overwhelming at first, but basically here at a glance, you have your system temperature and it'll show like what your bed temp is and what the nozzle temperature is and that could be controlled right from here so if i want to go ahead and well i can't do anything right now so you guys can probably hear it in the background but i just turned on my the actual printer so now we'll have a bit more settings we can mess with so right now we're not connected but i can change that by clicking connect right here in the left side and now we're actually connected to the printer. So now we can initiate a print. We can change filament. I can just add some temperature to it or whatever we need to do. So I can kind of go through that stuff with you guys right now. And we have these different tabs up here. But basically all I use this for is bypassing that failed SD card reader on my Ender 3. And this runs all of my prints now. So... Right now, if I want to do a preheat, I can either preheat for PLA or ABS and go ahead and hit PLA. So now it's going to start heating up the bed temp and the tool temp is actually your nozzle temp. And you can start to see our graph is starting to heat up a little bit and go up. So over here on the left, this is where you actually upload your G code files. So I already have some loaded up in here. So this is the whole way we are able to bypass the actual SD card reader of the Ender 3. As we no longer use that, we just use Octoprint and I upload my files from here. So I can go inside my file explorer and select files or I can even just drag and drop them. Let's see if I can get an example for you guys. And this is where you can drag a file onto here. It'll start uploading, and as you can see, we just dragged and dropped this one right there. So, pretty cool. And from there, you can delete it. You can cut the file out. This is where you would load and print. So, we'll click that, and it'll start printing that particular file, which is really cool. But that's pretty much the extent of what I use Octoprint for now. But like I said, there are a ton more features in here, and that's why it's a really good utility to use if you're getting into 3d printing or if you've been printing for a while and you want some more features and accessibility to your printer this is a really good way to go so up in these tabs we also have the control so this is where you could have a webcam hooked up to your raspberry pi and it could actually you could get a view of what your printer is doing via a camera we don't have one hooked up right now this is the actual access control of the printer. So if I click home, you can probably hear it in the background, it's moving. So it just home the X and Y axis. And now if I hit home on the Z axis, it should home the Z axis and that should be a complete homed and ready to level printer. So that's pretty cool. And then this is where you can turn off your stepper motors. You might hear a click here in just a moment. Maybe, maybe not. So yeah, this is where you can control the actual printer. And 
a couple of questions to kind of debunk with Octoprint. You can still use all of these features from the actual printer itself. So on its LCD display, you can auto, you can auto home it and stuff like that. This doesn't remove any of those features from your printer. This is just a second way to access those features. So like I mentioned, this is just a 3D printer controller. We're just controlling it in a little bit different way from a web interface, which is actually really nice. That's pretty much it guys. And then this is the G code viewer. You can actually see layer by layer how it's printing. And like I mentioned too, you can remotely access Octoprint if you have it set up properly. There's a lot of tutorials out there on how to remotely manage the printer and control it from off the network, which is really cool. Um, I haven't done that yet and I don't think I'm planning on doing it just because I don't see myself printing when I'm not home. So, but it is optional and it's pretty neat to see. So you do have that option and this can view your G code and how the print's coming along from the G code standpoint and the layers. Terminal, this, uh, I'm not too familiar with this. This might be some of the moves in the G code or this is probably just us booting up the system. And then time lapse, this is where you can make those really cool time lapse videos and set it up from there. So if you have the camera hooked up, you can also set up the time lapse configuration where you control the time lapse through Octoprint, which is really cool and it makes it a lot easier opposed to using an external camera and setting it up that way. Um, Octoprint does it all right here, which is really neat. So another reason I really like Octoprint, it actually makes things very convenient because you are kind of in one place, that being on your computer. So if I want to initiate a print and I got my printer loaded up, Octoprint's loaded up, I have the filament I want to use loaded in the printer. Basically, I can just do everything from right here. So I can start off and open up Cura, slice a particular file. I'll just select this file, go ahead and slice it, you know, make sure I got everything I want there. And I can just save it to a file, take that G code file, drop it into Octoprint, hit print on it and away I go. Instead of, you know, slicing it, running it over to the printer, grabbing the micro SD card, you know, inserting it, putting it on the micro SD card, going back to the printer. It's just, a, it's kind of nice that it removes some of those steps and it's in one place. Alrighty guys, that is going to wrap up this video. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you guys found this video very helpful if you are having issues with the SD card reader on your Ender 3 and are looking for some alternative solutions. Um, there's some out there on YouTube, but like I mentioned, there really wasn't any that fixed it for me. And then I saw some videos too of people actually desoldering and replacing the SD card reader on their Ender 3. That's a little beyond the scope of my skills and soldering and stuff. So I really didn't want to mess with that. And Octoprint's a really good move because like I said, it fixes the problem to where you can bypass the actual SD card reader on your Ender 3 and you get a boatload of features added by using Octoprint. So I was very skeptical when I first got into 3D printing about using Octoprint. And that's mainly because I thought having it connected to the network kind of allowed for more points of failure. But the way Octoprint works is actually really nice. It doesn't rely on your PC being on or anything like that. The actual Raspberry Pi that you have Octoprint loaded on is the print server. So it controls the printer. You don't have to leave your computer on when you're running a print. And the Pi holds all of that information in your computer or your device. It's just a means of accessing it. So that was where I was a little bit confused at first. And that's where Octoprint actually is pretty efficient. And there are a number of ways you can set up the Raspberry Pi. I went about doing it the most plug and play user friendly way, but your Raspberry Pi does need power and some people do wire the power into their actual Ender 3. So whenever you flip the switch on the Ender 3, the Raspberry Pi also gets power from there. That's once again, a little beyond the scope of what I know when it comes to electrical and soldering. 
So I went the easy route and just grabbed a AC power adapter for the Raspberry Pi, which I had laying around, and just plugged it in separately from the printer. So that works fine, and like I said, it's pretty plug and play user friendly. So I'll also have links in the description of where you can get some of the supplies needed to run Octoprint. I'll have links to like the Raspberry Pi that I would recommend and stuff like that down below. I'll have a link to Octoprint where you can download that ISO file and maybe some tutorials that I've watched in the past that helped me get it set up. That way it's a little bit easier to set up for you guys. That's it for this video guys. Thank you all for watching. If you found this video helpful and enjoyed it, make sure to drop a like on it. And if you want to see more tech related videos like this one, be sure to subscribe. As always guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.